So this video is an interview with Burt Dickerson, who won 4.8 million on slots. Are you listening? So this video is an interview with Burt Dickerson, who won 4.8 million dollars on slots. My name's Timothy Schultz. I actually am a lottery winner myself. In 1999, I won the Powerball before going back to college to study film and journalism and broadcast news. And I'm now combining my experience in these things with my desire to meet and interview other people that I find fascinating. And this includes other lottery winners and people who have come into sudden wealth. So if you're new to my channel, do consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon to be notified when these interviews come out. But this video is an interview I did with Burt Dickerson, who won $4.8 million playing slots, believe it or not. And I find his story very, very intriguing um, for a number of reasons, and I'm very excited to share it with you. So without further ado, let's get to my interview with $4.8 million jackpot winner, Burt Dickerson. So I'm here today with Burt Dickerson, who won $4.8 million, I believe, in slots. It's in Burt, Burt, how are you? I'm doing great. How about yourself, Timothy? Yeah, not not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah, thanks for joining me. Um, so you won $4.8 million in slots. Is that right? That's correct. It was a progressive jackpot at Dover Downs uh, Speedway. It was on, of all things, a NASCAR weekend. And um, I had a ticket in my pocket, which I'd forgotten about. It was last call. So I went to the bar to get a, a last beer and uh, found this ticket and I put it in a progressive machine and on about the third spin, my entire row of slots went out there, banks of 10. So 10 on my side and 10 uh, on the opposite side. And anyhow, all the slot lights went out and then a whole bunch of different color lights came on. My machine lit up and it uh, revealed the progressive jackpot, which was 4.8 million and some change. So uh, that was definitely a very exciting evening. Wow, that's, yeah. I can't imagine. Um, so when you win a major jackpot on a slot machine like that, so you said all the lights go out, um, but what, so I, I've always imagined, I mean, I can't, like what, so the lights go out, do, I mean, the, I, I the picture machines. balloons coming down and uh, a fanfare of people coming no, out. No, 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 <laughs> not at all. The, the lights on the neighboring machines went out and my machine essentially lit up just to reflect the, Progressive had been hit. The Progressive um, was a uh, machine called Cashola, and um, it was played between three different states, uh, Delaware, uh, Rhode Island, and the state of uh, West Virginia. So uh, whichever state the uh, jackpot hit in, the other states had to pay their portion of the pie to that state. So therefore, um, the jackpot was not paid by the, con the uh, casino, but rather the uh, Delaware Lottery Commission. Hmm. And so it's a little bit more intricate, um, but um, it's certainly a substantial jackpot. Uh, to date, it's still the uh, largest jackpot in Delaware history. Wow. Yeah, that's incredible. So so it's more like a a lottery, in a sense, that's through a slot machine? In a sense. Correct. Uh -huh. So when you uh, win a large amount of money in a slot win i know this is like quasi quasi lottery but when you win that do you have you know so like when i won the uh, powerball years ago i had to choose between cash and annuity uh annuity being you know around 30 years of an, an annual payment each year or half of it right away and uh how does that work with when you win um with a slot machine or specifically what you want uh, I had to choose between a 30-year annuity payout or uh, cash up front in a lump sum, which was substantially reduced. But just to give you an idea, $4.8 million goes to like one7 and some change after taxes. So Uncle Sam definitely gets his piece. Wow. Yeah, no, I know that's the, the same with the, with the lottery one. It's absolutely the same. You have to pay some hefty, hefty taxes. But, I mean, still, it's, a, it's an incredible... Uh, I don't have any complaints. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, what happened when you won? So the lights went out and did people come out and get you or, you know, what exactly happened when you won? 
Mm, I, I had a large uh, gathering of uh, interesting uh, characters, you know, being that it was a NASCAR weekend. So uh, not, not to put down NASCAR, of course, because that brings a lot of revenue to the state, but um, just a lot of questionable folks. And ironically, they could not find the proper uh, paperwork for this machine in particular because it had not hit in the casino in three or four years. So I was waiting and waiting and waiting until finally about 6.30 in the morning after hitting a little after 1 a.m., uh, they came up with some paperwork. And then they told me I had two weeks to decide whether I wanted a lump sum payout, which I chose, or the annuity uh, over a 30-year period, which would have been the full amount. So you never know when you're going to go. So I, of course, chose the lump sum. Right. Yeah. So what was the first thing you did as far as, uh, I mean, the average, I don't, I don't know about you, but for me and for a lot of people that win the lottery or win large prizes, you're not accustomed to having uh, wealth or at least uh, that kind of wealth. And so um, did you know how to, what to do with it and how to invest it? Or what did, did you seek a financial advisor or, or what did you do? The first thing I did was find a financial advisor and uh, I actually didn't make any major purchases outside of a, a new car uh, until, gosh, about uh, four years into it. And then uh, I ultimately uh, purchased the home and put the rest back into an annuity just so I'd have something, a nice little nest egg for retirement. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, right. Yeah, a lot of folks will apparently... Uh, go through it and end up on Skid Row. And though I wasn't from Skid Row, I certainly didn't want to end up there. And um, I'm a pretty simple guy, so I, I didn't really have too many fantasy things outside of travel. I love travel. I go uh, throughout Southeast uh, Asia and uh, the Far East on a regular basis. So um, that's definitely something that I wanted to continue doing. But outside of that, as long as I have my health and happiness, that's all I need. Yeah, absolutely. And that's interesting. I, so there's some lottery winners that I've spoken with. I, I just find it interesting how, um, you know, our culture kind of feeds um, materialism, uh, providing happiness for people. And some of the people I've spoken with, uh, including myself, you know, I, I value experiences above those things a lot of times. Um, do you like how? Do absolutely. You, yeah. It, it did not bring any happiness. If anything, it, it um, brought some uh, some misery into the, the equation. Having to tell so many people no that we're asking for money. No, I'm not the bank of Bert. You know, I'm sorry. This isn't for you. And it, it got to be a little a little stressful at times. So uh, yeah, um, but definitely uh, new experiences and travel. And I love cooking. Uh, so I like to travel the world and learn how different dishes are made. So that those are my passions right there. Um, and um, that's just me. So, uh, but definitely not the material things. They are here today and gone tomorrow. And I, I'd rather just have a, a good simplistic lifestyle over all the uh, bells and whistles. And with, with the cooking, um, that's another thing. Like it seems like a lot of um, people that win the lottery or win a prize uh, seem to have their personality sort of magnified, like their interests are magnified with what they can do. And for me, it was film and journalism. And for you, it sounds like cooking, like you're, so you're actually traveling around the travel world. And, uh, travel and cooking, I, I would say, you know, you can't really, outside of courses, you can't really spend too, too much on it unless you go to, uh, you know, the Culinary Institute of America or something to that effect. Uh, I did go to uh, Thailand for six weeks, and I went to a, a school called uh, the Samui uh, Institute of Thai Culinary Arts. Sipka.net is the email address, and they're on the island of Koh Samui. And uh, that's something I, I did to learn more about the food, the people, the culture, and uh, really get my hands dirty. That was a great, great time. Um, but um, I would highly recommend that to anyone that has an interest in you know, the culinary world. And of course, YouTube and Instagram are great as well. I'm just going to jump back a little bit because you said that you had some, you've had some people, like quite a few people come and ask you for money. And I have over the years as well. Uh, I have literally right here, um, like thousands of letters. I don't know if you can see these. 
<laughs> Mine were through Facebook primarily, and typically right after my prior TV shows were run. And I have every sob story known to mankind, I think, saved in a folder. And some of them were kind of comical. Some of them may have been true. I don't know. I can't save the world. So I try to uh, treat people the way I want to be treated and would expect the same from them. But unfortunately, I know the world doesn't really work that way. And some people do feel entitled. So Yeah, yeah. It's. Did you feel any... Um, there's. Are you familiar with sudden wealth syndrome? Is it something I've learned uh, no i'm not but i do believe it exists I, I can certainly see that yeah and it's i don't feel this way anymore but initially when i won i felt uh after the exhilaration wore off i sort of felt uh um, even some guilt for having won because i couldn't help uh, a fraction of the people that i wanted to help um without going broke rather quickly uh, because there's so much disparity and stuff in the world and so i felt you know just because i won the lottery my friends and my peers did not. And so uh, to do things with them, I had to pay for it a lot of times. And it just, it, it took a while to learn how to say no to people that wanted money. And um, it's just a, I've, I've learned about this sudden wealth syndrome, this psychological term. And I just wonder how you I was feel kind about of that. that way beforehand, treating all of my friends and uh, when I finally got into a serious relationship that's now 20 years as of this month, I learned a lesson. And most people are, are using you, Bert. Stick up for yourself. And uh, so we cleaned house and moved our merry own ways. But, um, yeah, a lot of people will just stick around if they're being treated nicely for whatever reason. Yeah. And how did you learn to say no? Uh, as simple as asking, well... Okay, you need five hundred dollars now. No problem. When can you pay me back, and on what date? And can you sign here? And that'll scare most people away. Yeah. <laughs> now, <laughs> if it was something legitimate, if someone I really cared about, you know, maybe. But uh, I just it got to be way too um, stressful dealing with all of the requests. And I even um, had a, a friend who will remain anonymous. That's not really a friend any longer, but. Uh, we both enjoy fishing, so I'd get caught way out in the Chesapeake Bay on his boat, and he'd corner me uh, and, and talk about, well, when can you loan me that $20,000 to start flipping homes with me? And uh, that's, that never happened and never will, but you know, I saw how he lived his life, and that's certainly not where I wanted to go, and I figured, well, if you live your life in a certain fashion and treat people in a certain way, well, you're probably not going to be too successful at your business. And for years, the guy had used smoking screens with me, so and was always bragging about how well he was doing. But that certainly, I learned was not the case. Sure. Yeah. No, I can totally empathize with that. There's so many people that come out of the woodwork and, and do that type of thing. No, I completely understand. Are you retired now? No, no, not at all. I, I work for Lockheed Martin, and uh, I'm a, a contract recruiter. So I look for. Uh, clear software engineers uh, for uh, positions uh, locally and some international, uh, but primarily in the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area, either for the, the Maryland client or, client or the Virginia client, if okay. you will. Sure. Yeah. And uh, after you initially won, did you consider the possibility of retiring or at least going uh, part time? Yeah. No. No, I okay. I think when someone um, stops working or doing something they're passionate about, uh, it's that's when things start going south and you can maybe get in trouble. So I never um, took that. I, I've never uh, taken time off uh, from work more than a month or a month and a half. Um, it's just that's not my style. So, um, but uh, looking back, I may may have tried to switch careers. You know, done a, a midlife. Um, career switch, if you will, and um, maybe opened up a catering business or something along those lines. But I have worked in the uh, culinary industry before in restaurants, and it's a lot of work. And I don't care what you think. You know, 16 hours a day is sometimes the norm if you're doing really well. And I just didn't want to uh, experience that burnout again. So, Yeah, no, sure. And one thing over the years that I've kind of 
come to believe at least is that you know you, you work for money but in addition to that it's part of your identity and part of your it helps keep your mind healthy to be doing something other than uh, wasting away in gluttony or something on the beach and you know how unfulfilling uh, absolutely would that be? so you've been on tlc's lottery changed my life and you've had some publicity from the win because it's a you know really big deal to win that much money um instantaneously mm -hmm. and so how is this lottery um, slot uh, fame, you know, the 15 minutes of fame that comes with this type of thing, how has that affected you? Do you enjoy this type of thing? And why do you? You know, you um, I just had a doctor's appointment this week, a regular checkup. And it's funny, I went to go, uh, or went to a new facility uh, to have a, a special test run. And um, two people within the practice asked you know you look familiar have you where do i know you from and apparently both of them had seen the tlc rerun uh and uh, literally and this has been nine years ago uh so that was pretty funny or eight years ago i guess it was um but uh, anyway uh it's pretty funny to to have that kind of experience but it happens all the time and uh i, I just try to be nice to people and you know what did i do i pushed a button so uh <laughs> that takes talent right <laughs> I just got lucky, and I'm thankful for that. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, um, did you have any inclination that you might win before you won? Mm, not so much. Uh, I no. I, it was something to do to pass the time. Um, at the uh, when I started going to Dover Downs, it used to be um, my, when my father developed uh, dementia. He recently passed, but. Um, when he developed dementia, I made a, a vow to myself to go and try to visit my folks every couple of weeks. So essentially, they'd go to bed and I'd go out. And um, that was a nice way of spending the time. And then we, I get to cook for them and, and do whatnot, uh, you know, things around their farm. But um, so that's when I started going. And um, it's, it's pretty much remained the same. I might only go maybe once or twice a month, at, if that, at, at this point in time. But um yeah, it, it's not as exciting, you know, after you've had some success. And then you, chances are lightning is never going to strike twice. So, you know, I, I may have done this once, but it, the, there's a very slim, slim, slim chance I'll do it again. And probably not. So eh, I've had my fun. Yeah, but you still play. Yeah. 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 And it well, and the odds are astonishing. I mean, I think it's for the game that you won i believe it was um one in seven million odds so that's you have a better chance of course being struck by lightning but also being crushed by a meteorite so. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> i like the second part of that <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah when you initially won what did they have you do did you have to do a press conference or uh i saw i mean i saw some photo ops and is there a video out there um there might be some videos from the news, Fox 5 News. Um, I was on the Game Show Network. Uh, don't ask the name of the show because I've forgotten. <laughs> uh, but that was recently. And uh, TLC was the big one. And they got a hold of me immediately after this happened. And then everyone I'd met, I think, over the past 20 years either emailed me or called me. Is that really you? Uh, that, that heard the news. So that was fun, but I'm not a, a big shot. And uh, so I, you know, I try to keep it hush hush. And I also learned never tell anyone it's not, there's no need to you know, go and, and, and spill your beans. Um, I tend to like to keep that to myself unless someone asks, of course, I'll be honest. But other than that, uh, it's just best to remain silent. Yeah, no, I completely understand and empathize. But w so I know my reasons for that, but what, so why do you feel that way? Uh, I just, karma probably more than anything. I don't want it to come around and bite me in the rear end because, uh, you know, that, that's not everything. And especially now that I have my um, money's tied up in an annuity for retirement, you know, I, I um, live a pretty modest life still. So it, there's no need to, to go there. And, I know folks with a lot more cash than I have that they earn themselves and uh, they're not that happy. Some, a few of them aren't. So it, it is what it is. Yeah. It's, Money it's, doesn't equal happiness. 
That's really interesting. And I I completely agree. And I think there's some some studies that have been done that uh, money can increase happiness to a certain extent. But then once you get past a certain level, it just doesn't make you any happier. And I, I mean, I completely believe that because it's, I mean, it hasn't, I've found happiness in relationships, you know, more Absolutely. so like that, that seems like it's true wealth. I don't know how you feel about that, but. I, I, I would agree with that. Definitely. Um, there was a point, I guess, right after I won where I wasn't happy unless I was winning a jackpot, you know, maybe for a week or so, because uh, that's just I was all excited. And I guess it's that dopamine hit to the brain. But after a while, it's just it's the, the trash that come in and out of casinos. I mean, I guess I would fall in that category. But um, it, there's a lot of people that I certainly don't want to be. I don't want to be around. I don't aspire to be. I don't care to see. Um, so um, got to take that and keep that in mind and you know, just realize where you stand. Try to be a, a decent person overall. You seem like you definitely have your head on your shoulders with this type of thing. Um, just today. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It, I mean, it's amazing to me that um, I think one in – I think within five years, the average lottery winner goes broke and not all of them. Perhaps less. Yeah. And, yeah. I can see that. And, and that doesn't happen to everybody. Um, but it's, it's interesting. Do you have an opinion why that is? Uh, they don't know how to manage it and um, they give too much of it away and uh, they over um, spend <laughs> just, you know, you got to put a cap on it somewhere. No, it's absolutely. no fun when you don't have cash, and I've been there too. No, it's a, it's a, it's amazing that whether you have, you know, one million or a hundred million, um, people can go broke rather quickly if they don't manage it right. It's not difficult to spend a million bucks. No, especially in Washington D.C. I mean, look at the cost of real estate. And let's say you, you can buy a, a beautiful home and maybe a car, if that. But um, it's just not worth it. Hold on to the money that you have and try to, to build off of that and make it grow. It's easier said than done. I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not a, a pro with all that myself. So that's why I, I chose to have a financial advisor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same here. It's really um, very easy to spend money. So, uh, you know, you have to spend it as if you earn it, I think, if you want to keep it for most people. Definitely. Um, you know, when you win a big prize, usually the average person goes out and splurges initially because, I mean, it's amazing. It's like an incredible thing to just come across all this money. So did you did you purchase anything when you first won? Uh, the only thing I, I purchased a, a car um, for my uh, partner and um, also his mother. So uh, those were the two splurges. I still drive the same car, believe it or not. Do you? <laughs> Yeah, I, I have a German Shepherd, so uh, I have the dogmobile, but I certainly don't want to have another hundred plus thousand dollar Mercedes payment. That's like a mortgage on a house. Uh, that was pretty foolish, but you know, you gotta you gotta keep some people happy, I guess. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's a, an, a that's an incredible car, though. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Do you have any advice to other? people who win the lottery or win a large slot machine win? Sure. I know it's difficult. Uh, don't uh, go out and blow it all at once. Uh, try to get a financial advisor to, to get you um, thinking in the right pattern. And of course, treat yourself well, but just don't overdo it. It's easy to get caught up in materialistic things that ultimately don't make a dent in anything that I would consider worthwhile. So the second you drive a luxury car off a lot, it depreciates and um, it, it's pretty crazy what, what can happen. A lot of folks end up in jail or addicted to drugs or, or what have you. And uh, slot, slot playing can be very addictive with all the bells and whistles and sounds and vibrating chairs and the lights and the op oxygen being pumped into the facilities, all that stuff. 
they're there to make money and they know how to do it. So yeah. Yeah. And the odds are that you're not going to win, but eventually someone somewhere eventually always wins. But what do you, what do you say to the people that the anti gambling people who think that, uh, you know, they note how addictive it can be. And there's a whole movement of people that are against the lottery and against um, people playing. What no, it's, that's a bit much. It's, you know, it's a free world. So um, just play responsibly. It's easier said than done. And uh, try to be honest with yourself and, and don't go out and, and spend your last dollar in a machine. So, um it's it's set up to to do that to you though if you have that type of personality. Yeah, it it seems like if you can spend what you can afford to lose and have fun with it, I don't see why that's a bad thing. You know, if you're if you're if it's for fun, if you're not uh, hurting yourself. Sure. But for people that are that want to win, do you have any advice for players? <laughs> Uh, well, I always, my thing was going late at night after everyone else had come to the casino and dumped all their money into the machines. And after last call, I've hit most of my jackpots during that time. So, um, jackpots being the 4.8, but, um, I also hit a $50,000 jackpot one time. I hit, um, 45,000, a couple for 18 uh, but always in the wee hours of the morning. So that's just me, but that's probably due to the time that I go anyway. Um, and then, uh, you know, if I've had a good night, I might have enough adrenaline to stay up and go fishing or something. <laughs> Start the day fresh, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, that's incredible. So when you win that much, how much are you paying to play? Like how much does it cost to, to My play? My forty-five thousand dollar jackpot I hit was on a um, dollar seventy-six spin. Uh, the fifty thousand was on a twenty-dollar spin. Um, the others were more expensive. Eighteen thousand, I think, was on a fifty-dollar spin. Kind of. So I'll build up to certain tiers, and then I'll say, okay, I'm going to do you know four spins at fifty bucks, and then I'll go back to the machines I was playing. You never know. But um, also, I don't like to drink when I go to the casinos. Uh, some people just get completely obliterated. Uh, that's not a good thing, especially if you don't have control. Um, so it, it all depends. Yeah, it'd probably be much easier to to let your money just waste away if you're have you if you've been drinking or you know. <laughs> <laughs> not in that environment, though. Yeah. So do you do you play other? games in a casino other than slots or is it mostly slots that you prefer it's slots that i prefer and the reason being i've played blackjack i've played poker um those two games people will uh, they don't have any um mouth control and if i play a card that, and play it in a manner that they don't care for they'll certainly let you know and i don't like that i prefer to go out i prefer to be anonymous if someone Looks like an interesting character. I love talking to them. Some people think I'm crazy, but it, it's interesting learning you know, where the, some of these creatures come from late at night. And um, so I enjoy talking to those types and, you know, um, sitting back and enjoying myself. But typically I'll go alone and um, then when it's done, it's done. And um, I usually have enough comps to take a free meal home or something to that effect. Wow. So, if you were to summarize how this win has changed your life, um, how has it changed your life? It really hasn't. It's, uh, it's enabled me to put a substantial down payment on a home. It's enabled me to save more than I would have for retirement. But uh, in the spectrum of life, the, the small things in life to me really make the biggest differences. And... Um, it's enabled me some luxuries and some comforts, but um, just overall trying to do what you want to do and not living for anyone but yourself, remembering that you're number one is key. Uh, then, you know, trying to go out and, and hit it at casinos. I hear so many stories of, um, or overhear conversations, I should say, of people talking about, oh, we're going to, you know, hit it big tonight, aren't we? And, you know, go home and, 
they all, I, I see so many people, it's funny, when I arrive in the evenings, um, when I've played in the past, so many people leaving and cussing at the building and all upset you know, because they lost everything. And that I, I see a lot more of that than people leaving with big smiles. So let's just leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, it seems like it's designed that way. But huh. It is. Is there anything that you um, would like to say about the win that maybe I don't know enough to ask about? Hmm. Well, that's a good question. I um, don't lose your mind when you, you come into a large sum of money. I'll, I'll never forget waking up the first day the funds were deposited into my account. And this was before taxes even were paid because you get the money first and then you pay taxes on the money. And I thought, oh, gosh, I could flee the country now. Ooh, I, I never would. But um, just be smart and um, try to hold on to as much as you can uh, and invest properly. And you'll surprise yourself waking up and finding how much your money has grown as opposed to going back out and throwing it into a machine and not having any guarantee. Are you ever afraid of uh, like the weirdos coming out of the woodwork or anything from... <laughs> No, I might be considered a weirdo myself, but uh, no, I, uh, I I'm I'm a pretty big guy, so no, I I can keep to myself, and um, I know certain types of behavior. So if someone's going to you know get belligerent with me, and and um, I can easily walk away. And the good thing about casinos is security is always right next to you, so. Uh, I don't think you're going to have too many troubles inside an establishment like a casino, frankly. Yeah, absolutely. And is there anything else that you want to say about the uh, win or how it's changed anything? Be yourself. Don't waste money. Get a financial advisor. Remember, the small things in life are much better than the big monetary things that you might come into or a counter once in a while. And try to treat yourself as you want to be treated, but more importantly, treat others in a nice manner. And you'll be surprised what karma will do. It won't come around and kick you. You might you might get a little praise here and there. Well, thank you very much, Bert, for for joining me. I really really appreciate it. Uh, it's always sure. an honor to interview other people that have won the lottery, or in your case, a slot slash lottery. But it's such a rare. Um, thing that happens to so few people and so i'm really appreciative for your time and for um, speaking with me today i really appreciate it well thank you so that was my interview with bert dickerson i hope that you enjoyed it if you like this video go ahead and hit the like button and if you are new to my channel do consider subscribing because i do interviews with other people i find fascinating as well that includes people who have come into sudden wealth as well as other lottery winners um, but let me know in the comments if you won, this is the $4.8 million question. If you won $4.8 million, what would you do with it? That's the question of the day. Let me know in the comments. I love checking out your comments. Uh, but thank you so much for watching, and thank you for your support. Hey, 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 hey.